Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, what's poppin'? Jock Slay here. And uh, I think it's time. It's time to put together the top 10 overall sneakers of 2020. Now I did Jordan, I did Nike, I did Adidas, but now I'm putting all of those together and coming out with my personal top 10. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Look, 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 before I get started, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Ghostbusters Reebok Ghost Smashers collab that just missed the cut. As a kid, I loved the original Ghostbusters movie, the sequel with the fire New Jack Swing soundtrack, and the real Ghostbusters cartoon with the characters that look nothing like their real life counterparts. Anyway, if six year old me had kicks like the Ghost Smashers at the height of my fandom, I would have lost my mind like that kid who screamed Nintendo 64 for Christmas. All right, let's kick it off with number 10. It's the Dior Air Jordan 1. So yeah, my my dilemma was either putting this or the Reebok Ghostbusters at number 10. Let that sink in for a second. Anyways, the Dior ones, both the high and the low, was a sneaker behemoth in 2020. The clout you got from having a pair was really unlike anything we've seen in sneaker culture since the early days of Kanye and Adidas. I mean, you had clowns on social media trying all sorts of stunts with them just to get attention, and the sad part? is that it works. But once you strip away all of that, you're left with an Air Jordan 1 that looks and feels like a premium release. Yes, we can criticize the price tag all we want, but it's sold out and it's reselling for three to four times its MSRP. It was meant to be a headliner and it achieved that goal this year, but we couldn't put it at number one because that would just be too easy. And at number nine is the Union Air Jordan 4 Off Noir. So the Union Air Jordan 1 was lightning in the bottle. The concept, the execution, and the release was basically a perfect storm. The fours should feel like a worthy follow-up in terms of not just replicating what made the one so successful, but it doesn't have the same spark. Let's be honest. I feel like there was a percentage of people that were hyping this up more than it deserved because they wanted it to be the second coming of the Union ones, but it just, is it? It is its own separate entity though, and that's a good thing. Yes, the design borrows from the ones in the sense that they both look like they were used or scraps left on the cutting room floor, but the way they pursued that look was totally different. They didn't just recycle an idea that worked before and made another corduroy sneaker for another brand. Oh, but this time it was Velcro. Yay, I guess. And we're not even talking about the way the surprise features of the fours with the stitched up tongue that can be undone was a big deal. That was a brilliant move and a subtle troll that I think changed a lot of people's minds about the actual release. Number eight, Air Jordan 4 Shishiko. Okay, so I'm not going to say something controversial and claim that this pair is somehow better than the iconic Levi's Air Jordan 4 collab, but it's not a bad consolation prize if you can find it. The denim upper with the patchwork, the stitching style, give it a one of a kind look. Even fresh out of the box, it feels like something you've had for a while now, like a pair of jeans you've worn forever. I hope that once this lands in the hands and feet of more people, we start to see them customize them like they did the Levi's 4s. Change up the colors, give them a pre-distressed look even more so than they already are. The canvas is there to do something really cool and special with these, and I can't wait to see what people do with it. Number seven, Nike Space Hippie 03. Look. I feel like out of all of the Space Hippie sneakers in this collection, this is the one that requires the least amount of explanation. I mean, you can just say, this is a Nike shoe made out of trash, and I feel like most people would get it right off the back. Because with the other shoes, they look like something you can buy at a store. You might actually have to go through the process of explaining to them why it is trash. But with this one, the 03, it looks like trash from the jump, but not in a bad way. You have to look at this from the perspective of a company that is actually looking for ways to improve their car carbon footprint. Yes, it's about creating and producing sneakers fast and efficient, but they're also focusing on streamlining the process and reducing waste. Hence, sneakers made out of trash. Makes sense to me, but I wonder if it has translated to the general public. Like, if you see somebody walking around in these, can you say, hey, nice trash shoes you got there? Yeah, that might not work. We might need to work on the branding for this one. Number six, Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm about to brag about something cool that I did. So I just happened to finish the New York Marathon and hopefully someday I'll be able to do it again once we're out of this whole pandemic nightmare. And when I do it, I'll hopefully get a chance to do it while wearing this shoe, the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. The runner in me, it just loves the assist that these shoes give us as they put me in the best possible position to really succeed and hit that PR. Number five, Nintendo Puma Rider 
NES. So I have to give Puma a lot of respect. Why? In the span of a few years, they have worked with both Nintendo and Sega on official sneaker collabs. And while I have a special place in my heart for the Sonic RSO and the Mario 64 RS Dreamer from earlier this year, it's the future rider in the colors of the legendary Nintendo Entertainment System that has to make this list. Modeled after the iconic system that 80s babies such as myself spent countless nights, and if we're being honest, mornings before school, playing until we could finish World 8-4, the Future Rider is a nostalgic trip. In fact, it's one of the few sneakers where I don't feel compelled to remove the hashtag. Number four, Air Jordan 11 Jubilee or Adapt. I really think these two together is going to be one of those inflection points for Jordan brand. Here's why. The Air Jordan 11 Jubilee in many ways is the perfect Air Jordan 11. What I mean by that is that the 11 was always meant to look like this. All black upper, hits of silver, white midsole, milky outsole. But, and this is a big but, the Jordan on the eyelids detracts from that perfection. Will this be how future holiday Jordans look moving forward? Or will there be enough complaints Hint, hint, please complain about this, that in a few years, Jordan Brand will give us the correct version without the Jordan on the eyelets. Now, as for the Adapt 11s, well, they're either gonna be a huge hit or a massive failure that they never try again. And I'm super curious to see what the response is actually going to be. Number three, Nike ISPA Road Warrior. Now, if you see me actually walk around in these shoes and you say, hey Jacques, those shoes are trash, I won't take that as a compliment like the Space Hippie. I'll take those basically as fighting words and we might have to go right then and there. Just kidding, obviously I won't fight you over shoes. Kidding aside, Nike is at their best when I think they're doing experimental and they come out with something that I think is only going to be fully appreciated years down the road. I'm calling it right now. You might not like the Road Warrior, but within the next 10 years, I predict that these will be the wave or whatever slang we have instead of the wave in the next 10 years. Number two, Air Jordan 35, Bayou Boys. Our favorite Jordan of 2020 grabs the number two spot. And it's appropriate, really. Like the Road Warrior before it, I think that people are gonna look at these Bayou Boys PEs that were made for Zion years from now with that same fondness that we do something like the Airship or the Nike Hirachi that Kobe wore before he got a Nike signature shoe. It's going to be really interesting. It's gonna be an interesting footnote to Zion's sneaker history when he was embracing New Orleans life and culture. It's my favorite Air Jordan 35 so far, and it's going to take a lot to knock it off its perch as number one in 2020 or even in 2021. Number one, Ben & Jerry's Nike SB Dunk Pro Low Quick Strike Chunky Dunky. So from the jump, there was something special, I mean, very special about the Chunky Dunky. The way it replicates the look of a Ben & Jerry's ice cream box that you buy at a grocery store or the bodega is like one to one. You could prank somebody who wasn't paying super close attention into grabbing one of these from the freezer and checking out only to find out that they actually grabbed a pair of kicks. This was an early candidate for sneaker of the year and I have to agree with the people. It did not let go of its grasp of the culture. The fact that it's an SB Dunk only furthered the hype for them and it made me angry. Personally, if they had done the same storytelling and color schemes on a Tailwind or a Kill Shot, I still think these would have been amazing. But I wonder if the rest of the culture would be just as enthusiastic, but we won't worry about that now. It's the right collab at the right time on the right silhouette. Congrats to the Chunky Dunkies. And now I just really want a pair after taking multiple L's on these. Somebody help me out. That's gonna do it for my top overall list of sneakers for 2020. Let me know if there's a sneaker that should be on the list, that shouldn't be on the list, or did I get it right, which I think I did, especially because it's my opinion. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm Jacques Slade. Make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.